Now, today, let's talk about elementary algebra. Okay, what we're going to discuss today is trigonometric equations. Trigonometric what? Equations. Yes. I'm going to solve uh, equations and trigonometry. Now, let's see what we have for today. This one say, find a solution of 8 cos square x plus 6 sine x minus 9 equal to 0. For x is greater than or equal to 0 or less than or equal to 2 pi. Okay, now let's go. We have 8 cos x cos square x plus 6 sine x minus 9 is equal to 0. So we should solve. Now pay attention to what I'm going to do here. Let's look at the terms. Which one are we going to work on? Or uh, which of those terms can we do something about? We look at 9. There's nothing we can do to 9. Sine x. Can we change sine x? No. Cos square x. Yes, 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 yes. We can do something about this cos square x. You remember on uh, our trigonometric identities, we talk about so many formulas. In one of those formulas, we have the one we call Pythagorean identity. Now, that one says sine square x plus cos square x is equal to 1. Okay? Aha! Uh -huh. Let's go there. Now, in that formula, you discover that cos square x if you decide to make cos square x the subject of formula, then you have cos square x is equal to 1 minus sine square x. Alright? Okay, let's go. Let's pick it. In our cos square x here, we can actually replace it with 1 minus sine square x. Is it true? Or is it possible? Yes, we can do it. Let's do it like that. Let's see how it will look like. So, instead of cos square x, we now uh, put... 1 minus sine square x. So it will look like 8. You open bracket 1 minus sine square x. You close the bracket plus c sine x minus 9. This expression and the above is still the same. There's no difference. Okay? Now let's go. Let's open this bracket now. We have 8 times 1 will give us 8. And then 8 times minus sine square x will give us minus 8 sine square x. Okay, then we have plus 6 sine x minus 9 equal to 0. All right, let's go. Let's rearrange them very well uh, based on the number of their degree. All right, now we will have minus 8 sine square x. Is that true? Minus 8 sine square x plus 6 sine x minus 9 then we take 8 to meet minus 9 okay then it will be minus 9 plus 8 equal to 0 are you cleared here now now let's go we will now have minus 8 sine square x plus 6 sine x minus 1 because when we say minus 9 plus 8 to give us minus 1 equal to zero all right good we are not going to work with minus eight sine square x so we want to change this first time to positive so to change it to positive we divide it by minus one we divide it by what minus one so that minus we cancel minus all right then eight sine square x divided by one is the same okay now and what you do to the first time, due to the rest. What you do to one, do to others. Uh, we also divide the rest of them by minus one. So we divide six sine x divided by minus one, and then minus one divided by minus one. So this will have, at the end of the day, six sine x divided by minus one will give us minus six sine x. Then minus one divided by minus one will give us plus one. Okay? So we have. 8 sine square x minus 6 sine x plus 1 equal to 0. Now let's go. From here now, you know, it looks like somehow quadratic. But let's see what we can do more so that it will look more beautiful. Okay? Now let's find a letter and replace it with sine x. 
Okay, you have sine square x and then you have sine x. So let's find a letter and replace it. Okay, you can choose any letter. Okay, now let's go. We say let sine x is equal to p, let sine x be p. Now, in the above expression, instead of writing 8 sine square x, now you have sine square x, that is double of sine x. Okay, now we have 8 p square. That is sine square x, okay? Now, instead of writing sine x, we will now replace it with p. So, but this one is having square. So, it will be 8p square minus 6p. That is, instead of writing sine x, we will replace it with what? p plus 1 equal to 0. Now, you can see it. It looks exactly, perfectly quadratic equation. So we have 8p square minus 6p plus 1 is equal to 0. Let's factorize, okay? We've, uh, we solve this uh, quadratic by factorization. And then in factorization, we'll say uh, the coefficient of p square multiplied by the constant. That is 8 times 1 will give us 8, okay? Now we find two numbers that when you add them together, it will give you minus 6. Okay, and then when you multiply them, it will give you positive 8. So what are those two numbers? We have minus 4, minus 2. Minus 4, minus 2, we give you minus 6. And then minus 4 times minus 2, we give you positive 8. Now let's use this uh, two times and replace 6p above. Now we have 8p square minus 4p minus 2p plus 1. So this minus 4p minus 2p is the same as minus 6p, okay? Now let's go. It's equal to 0, okay? Now let's group them 2 by 2. So in our grouping, we'll have 8p square minus 4p in bracket minus 2p plus 1 in bracket equal to 0, okay? Now these are brackets we have now. Let's factor out each. Now, in the first bracket, we have 8p squared minus 4p. Uh, what do they have in common? Those two things, 8p squared and then 4p, what do they have in common? If you look closely, you discover that 4p is common between them. Okay, if you factor out 4p in 8p squared, what will be remaining is 2p. Then factor out 4p in 4p you'll be having minus 1. So that when you say 4p times 2p, it will give you 8p square. And then when you say 4p times minus 1, it will give you minus 4p. Okay? Good. Let's go to the second. We'll have 2p plus 1. What are we going to factor out here? What do they have in common? They have 1 in common, okay? Now we factor out minus 1. Then what will be remaining in 2p is 2p. Now in 1 is 1, okay? So that when you say minus 1 times 2p, it will give you minus 2p. Then minus 1 times minus 1, it will give you plus 1. Equal to 0, okay? Now let's go. We have uh, two things uh, in... The bracket, that is, they are the same. Two, we have two brackets and uh, the same thing is there. So we pick one and then pick those uh, values outside the bracket, okay? Now, when we pick those values outside the bracket, we have 4p and then minus 1. We put them together and then since the two brackets are, uh, are having the same thing, so we pick one of them. So we pick 2p minus 1, okay? So we have 4p minus 1. In bracket, 2p minus 1, in bracket, equal to 0. Now, let's go. We have 4p minus 1 is equal to 0. Or 2p minus 1 equal to 0. You get it? Yeah. Okay. Now, we have 4p. We take minus 1 to the other side. It will be positive 1. We are looking for p, not 4p. So, we divide both sides by 4. Now, 4 divided by 4 will give you p. Okay, 4p divided by 4 will give you p. Now, 1 divided by 4 will give you 1 all over 4. So we have p is equal to 1 all over 4. Or, in the other side, we have 2p is equal to, we take minus 1 to the other side, to be it will give you 1, all right? So we have two divided, 2p divided by 2. And then one, 1 divided by 2, okay? Now we have 2 cancel 2. We have p is equal to 1 all over 
2. But you remember that we say sine x is p. And we have finally gotten the value of p. So this value of p we have gotten is actually the true value of sine x. Do you remember? We replaced sine x with p and so for p. Okay? So we finally got a value and that, that value is the true value of sine x. Okay, now let's go. We say that sine x is equal to p. Okay? Now we say sine x is equal to 1 all over 4, which is the value that we got. Or sine x is equal to 1 all over 2. But we are looking for x, not sine x. Hello? Please and please pay attention to what we are going to do here. I beg you. Please pay attention. We are looking for x, not sine x. So what we are going to do, we are going to divide both sides by sine. Okay? So we have sine x divided by sine. Sine we cancel sine. Okay? Then in the other side we have 1 all over 4 divided by sine. That is it. Hold it like that. Now let's go to the other one. We have sine x is equal to 1 all over 2. Let's divide both sides by what? Sine. We have sine x divided by sine, we give you sine, we cancel sine. Okay, we have x. Now we have 1 all over 2 divided by sine, or 1 all over 2 all over sine. Okay, good. Let's go. We have x is equal to 1 all over 4. This all over is the same as divided by sine. Okay, good. Let's go to the other one. We have all. x is equal to 1 all over 2 divided by sine. Is it true? Yes. Now let's go. We have x is equal to 1 all over 4. If you want to perform fraction, we want to perform the operation of division on that fraction. So division will change to what? Multiplication. And as it is changing to multiplication, there will be what we call inversion. That is denominator will become numerator and numerator will become denominator in the right hand side. Okay? Now, we have x is equal to 1 all over 4. This division sign will turn to uh, multiplication, and then this is sine all over one. Okay, it will turn it will turn to one all over sine. You get it? Yes. Now we have all x is equal to one all over two times. This division will change to times. Then we we'll have one all over sine. Okay. Now x is equal to one all over sine is inverse. If you have been following us. In this uh, tutorial, we discovered that there was a place we talked about inverse of a number. You get it? In mathematics, when we talk about inverse of a number, we have two ways we can represent we can represent uh, inverse of a number. You can use one all over that number to represent the inverse, or that number raised to power minus one. You get it? Now let's go. Then you will discover that 1 all over sine is inverse. So there is another way we can write it. We can simply say sine raised to power minus 1, then times 1 all over 4. That is sine inverse 1 all over 4. Or, now we take 1 all over sine is inverse, all right? Now we say x is equal to sine inverse of 1 all over 2, okay? Now, get your calculator with you, please. In the calculator... I'm referring to scientific, okay? Now, in the calculator, point shift, okay? After the shift, locate your sign, okay? You, you press uh, shift, then sign. Now, there's something that will appear on your screen. That is sign raised to power minus one. It's talking about sign inverse. That is sign inverse okay now you type uh, one all over four okay sign inverse of one all over four so it will give you 14.48 approximately okay so 14.48 now let's go to the other side shift sign one all over two okay that is sign inverse of one all over two it will give you 30 degree. All right, all right, all right, all right. We have finally solved this trigonometric equation that says 8 cos square x plus 6 sine x minus 9 equal to 0. So finally, we have solved it and uh, our value of x is 14.48 degree or 
30 degree. Thank you very much. Let's go further. If you have any question, please drop it at my email. All right, we are going to teach more on this trigonometric equation until you master it very well. All right, thank you very much. See you next time.